Hey, what's up, shitheads? Big Dog here. Today, we have a very special episode because we're going to be doing a range test on the E-Ride Professional Super Sport 2.0, or as it's more commonly referred to as the E-Ride Pro SS. As you can see, I'm not at home today. I'm actually in Nevada, and I'm in a perfect area where I can pretty much ride this thing anywhere I want. And uh, we're going to go see exactly how far we can go on this. I'm going to ride it exactly how I want to. I'm going to be doing sport mode, eco mode. So this is going to be a very realistic um, use case scenario of how far you can get on this bike. And for reference, I am six foot two, 240 pounds. Without further ado, guys, I'm going to get geared up and then uh, we're going to get out there and see the sights of Nevada. And uh, I invite you guys to come along with me. So come on, guys, let's get going. Look, I look like Sir Ronster. I'm going to put it in my thumbnail because I don't have any originality. As of now, we're at zero miles, 100%, 190 miles on an odometer. Uh, my Strava doesn't work well, so I'm not going to be using that today. And uh, we're off. So these little creatures right here are known as chickens. And believe it or not, when you buy eggs in the store, they come from these chickens. So when I was told that, my mind was blown. Did you learn that when you watched the uh, Talaria boys? So the nice part about this area is, is there's all these little uh, the service roads you can take. So you can get around for miles and miles and miles out here without going on a proper road. There's dirt roads that go everywhere. And let me tell you guys, if I lived out here, I would have about 45 dirt bikes. My entire identity would be based around dirt bikes. I would change my name to like Shreddy Mc... McChit or something like that and I everything would be I'd look like Brian Deegan having a bike like this in an area uh, such as this you would just be in heaven I mean not only like is it fun to ride around but it's also like super convenient for your keen eye viewers out there you might have noticed this and this is a draggy so I'm gonna be checking my top speed here on the draggy there now when you ride like that you're gonna blow through your range super fast so I'm not gonna be riding like that for long but I just wanted to you know this is how you're gonna be riding these bikes and this is how we're gonna be riding it today there's like ruts in this road but this suspension just eats this stuff right up Spotify play guns and roses you could be mine on repeat let me tell you guys, you just feel so cool riding a bike like this around. It's really hard to put it in the words. And out here, it's just great because, you know, in my area, I have to ride on the street and I have to worry about the legality of it. And out here, you could just ride pretty much anywhere. Uh, I'm in Nevada and I think 80% of the land in Nevada is BLM land. So I guess Black Lives Matter bought out. Oh, it's not Black Lives Matter. It's a Bureau of Land Management. So the vast majority of Nevada is public land. You can go out and do whatever you want on it. You feeling adventurous? We're gonna cross this little canal here. It's a little spooky. One thing that's nice about these bikes too, it's not so heavy where you can't, you can lift these things up pretty easy where I think a, a dirt bike, a regular gas dirt bike, you wouldn't really be able to maneuver it around too easy. Oh, did I just go over that for no reason at all? I sure did. You know, I just went over that and you could cross right here. So you can see we are in the middle of nowhere and sadly one of the real problems in this area has been gang violence. There was clearly some sort of a shootout here. The remnants of uh, the shootout are here for everyone to see. It's very sad. So I mean, there's just, these areas are just completely lacking gun control and people come out here and they just shoot at each other. It's just so scary. You know, that's why I live in the city. 
The cities are known for being extremely safe. There's more restrictions on these things and we just don't have to worry about uh, these, these uh, attacks like you see out here. So I just wanted to highlight that. Sorry, I don't want this channel to be political or anything, you know, guys, I just wanted to let you know that when you're not riding in the safe, safe city like out in California, that you can expect to be, see things like this. So trigger warning guys. Uh, I'm sorry you had to see that. We're gonna continue on. And I just wanted to point out guys that I do in fact have flat out in these tires because as you can see, I am not close to anything here. And the last thing I wanna do is get a flat and have to push this bad boy. We are at 4.6 miles now. So uh, yeah, look, I'm Sir Ronster. So like I said, I'm gonna be doing sport and eco mode. And uh, I've been in eco mode for about 12 seconds out of this ride. So, you know, it gives a fair balance, right? You know, I've never been on this trail specifically, but the good thing about this area is it's usually so wide open, you can kind of see uh, visual landmarks of where you need to go. And it's just crazy, cause like you're riding around and look at this, there's a road there, the road's there, it splits. But check it out guys, this is pretty cool. I would be doing this all the time if I lived out here. Like I said, my entire identity would change. My uh, diet would consist of about 90% monster energy drinks. And I don't like to go too fast because I'm not familiar with this trail. And the last thing you want to do is start hitting some bad ruts at around 30, 40 miles an hour. But I know where I'm going. I'm just trying to take the scenic route there. So man, Nevada is a really neat state. You start looking at the map and you realize you can travel like 80 90 miles without hitting a proper paved road you can go so many places in nevada on dirt roads and back roads so if you're ever bored you know start looking at google earth and you just check out like you can go nuts in nevada so nevada is absolutely whole the whole state is like a playland for atvs the range the the range numbers i post on these things are really funny it's like 50 miles at 25 miles an hour or 90 at 15. It's like, who in the heck's gonna buy an E-Ride Professional Super Sport and go 15 miles an hour the entire time? It's like, yeah, yeah, I get that it's possible, but like, are those really realistic numbers at all? Should we really even be quoting those or putting them out there? So far, I've got the suspension dialed in pretty good. It eats most of the stuff up really nice. Uh, it looks like we're about 86% now, and we are about 5.5 miles into the ride. I hear a lot of the uh, more dirt bike oriented channels talk about getting a 17 inch rear wheel with a wider rear tire on this. And honestly, for the way I ride, this bike has left me not really wanting to do any upgrades at all so far. And most people mention the uh, riser bars as one of the first things, but um, me at 6'2", I don't really find that I need a rider's bar, although I might do it at some point, but I honestly feel like these stock bars are fine. You start watching reviews and videos of these bikes and you start thinking you need to upgrade things before you even get the bike and realize that you ride it for yourself and think it's completely fine. I'm gonna give it some juice here. And I also heard people mention that the uh, suspension on the 2.0 version is overly stiff. Yeah, it's, I mean, it's kind of stiff, but coming from mountain bikes and stuff like that, this feels really soft. And this is really rocky right here, so. All right, let's get a, check this out, guys. We're at 6.3 miles, but check it out. Look at this. There's just trails everywhere. You see that? Can you guys see that in the video? There's just trails everywhere right there. This whole area is just a playground for dirt bikes. So if you live in an area like this, guys, stop what you're doing right now, use the link in the description of this video and buy an E-Ride Pro Super Sport 2.0 and just start enjoying this stuff, man, check it out. And I wanna show you guys too that, you know, I'm not a crazy dirt bike rider. I'm none of those Nitro Circus guys. I don't go crazy. I like to just experience and check things out. So I'm showing you guys that you don't have to drive a ride like you're crazy. Seven. 
funny thing is, this has the turbo button. I don't think the turbo button does anything on the 2.0. I don't notice a single difference using it. So we are at now 8.7 miles and 78%. I'll tell you what, when you're going fast on this bike, you eat through that range it's super quick. Man, I would be out on this thing every single day, guys, if I lived out here. I'd probably change the name of my channel to the E-Ride Adults. You know, because there's the Talaria boys, but hey, I'm a very mature, sophisticated adult male, so I'd change it to the E-Ride Adults, guys. What do you think of that? Maybe I could talk about wine and cheese pairings, too, and how to ride your bikes in a mature fashion. It's a nice day out right now. It's in the morning. It's probably good 70 something degrees. This feels nice, nice breeze. Nice day to be out on your uh, electric dirt bike, that's for sure. You know, they say the top speed of this bike is 60, and uh, me being 240, most of the time I test e bikes, I can't hit the top speed, but I've hit the speed, I've hit 60 on this a few times. Granted, I think the GPS, you know, it's maybe 58, 59. But I've hit 60 on this speedometer a few times, so it's pretty accurate top speed. The weight limit on this bike is 300, so I'm not I'm not pushing the weight limit, but I'm uh, I'm, I'm on the upper end, that's for sure. Just want to give you guys an idea of how quiet it is out here. Listen to this. I have to say one upgrade I think I would like to do. I would like to get a cushier seat after i ride a bit this one's not this one's not the most comfortable this is a huge strip mine here i wish i had my drone working because i'd show you guys what it looks like but it's just a huge hole in the ground i'm not sure if it's still active or what but it's been here for over 100 years i believe where this bike can go 60 miles an hour i think this bike it definitely excels from the zero to 40. It's got so much torque on tap, you can accelerate super fast. Uh, instant throttle response. The, the throttle mapping on this bike, I think, is just so good. It's like the more you pull it, the more power you get. There's no delay, there's no dead space in this throttle. It's so nice. Day time we are at 14 miles and we are at 64 percent uh the section i was just riding i was riding at like 45 miles an hour sustained for a while so we're actually be climbing this pretty steep hill right here that's absolutely no problem i'm just trying not to loop the bike because uh like i've mentioned before i'm still getting used to the uh still getting used to these things trails galore everywhere you go out here but we're gonna be checking out this old uh, drive-in theater here it's like a remnant of a bygone era. You know, you can just go ride around on it, check it out. There's the screen. I'm not sure when this was last open. It had to have been a long time ago now, but there's the old concession stand and everything where probably the projector was at. You can see here where, you know, people used to park and hook the speakers up. Man, you know, even me, I'm 44. I've only been to a drive-in theater a few times. There's actually still one in my area. But uh, all the other ones I know of have closed now, so it's really kind of a, a sign of the times, you know. It's, they just don't have these anymore, but how cool is this? The range on this thing varies so much, because just put in the perspective here, this bike can put out a peak power of 12,000 watts, and the battery is, works out to be about 2,800 watt hours, so in theory, at full throttle, you can kill this battery in like 20, 20 minutes or something like that. So, you know, you feel free to check my math. All right, we're done at the theater. Now we're gonna start making it back to where we started. We're at 63%, 14.4 miles. Let's switch you guys over to time-lapse. What do you say?
Okay, update time. We are at 19.1 miles. 50 miles an hour, baby. There's only one road in Urington, really, and uh, it's a 60 mile an hour speed limit, and I don't really feel like riding on a, a highway. You know, I'd rather uh, ride on these side roads. Plus, it's much more scenic, guys. You know, you don't get to see stuff like this when you're driving around in your boring old car, right? We're at 48 percent, and uh, I'm gonna go this way. We're gonna go this way, guys. I definitely feel the power decreased, but it doesn't feel slow by any means. It definitely still feels nice and responsive and quick. We're at a ride time of about 59 minutes right now. One kind of scary thing I've noticed out here is all, every time people see you, they wave at you. It's like, hey, I don't know these people. Why are you waving at me? And then it made me think, maybe it's gang signs. You know, because like I showed you earlier, there's gang violence out here, the Urington Crips and Bloods. It's a, uh, that feud's been going on for a really long time. So scary, that's one thing you would ride around out here. You gotta worry. You're gonna find yourself on the wrong side of a turf war, you know? And guys, just so you know, during the time-lapse section, I was riding an Eco for a bit there. I do find if I'm riding around 28 miles an hour, I'll just slap it over in Eco mode. It uh, uses significantly less power. But you're not gonna buy one of these things and just ride around an Eco, are you? Oh, see, there's those gestures I was telling you about. Here we go, and we're off. cool is this guys? Have any of you done stuff like this? I've done it on the e-bike before but this is the first time on the e-moto. So this area is all in a valley here so that's why you have all this farmland but not too far up the road in each direction it just becomes a desert. So all through here everything's nice and green. baby so yeah we're at 44 percent battery and we can still get up to 55. it's cooking through here so we are at 22.4 miles 42 percent battery and one hour and three minutes of ride time Another update time, we are at 29.2 miles, 26% left. And check it out, guys. We're just a few miles down the road, and look how much the scenery has changed. So you can see the green area is where we were just at. So uh, I was tempted to keep going up these hills, but uh, I'm at 26%, and uh, I need to be a little smarter and start heading back. But man, this is pretty cool, isn't it? So far, this bike has enough power in eco mode to climb almost any hill I've come across. I haven't really had to go to sport mode. Yeah, if you want to go flying faster up the hills, you need to put it in sport mode. But uh, for the most part, you can get up these hills in eco. So Some real trailblazing now. I followed the trail to a dead end and I'm not going to be hopping the fence with this bike. So we got to go down here. So this bike can do it all, guys. But I take it slow in this because you'll come across some areas with some super soft sand and it'll make you squirm all over the place so I'm not, I don't go too fast. Somehow I got on the wrong side of this fence and uh, luckily this bike isn't too heavy and I can lift it over the barbed wire here. So now we are back on the right path guys. It's all part of the game when you're doing the exploration thing guys. Alright guys we are back on Asphalt, 19% battery. We're gonna try sport mode, let's see. Definite feel of loss in power. Not really wanting to go much past 40. Still getting up there. So yeah, I'm not gonna tempt my luck, guys, but 
definitely noticing a loss in power at this point. We are at 33 miles, so we got some pretty good range already. You can see the little red bars flashing at me now. 16% straight, no, via, no trespassing, but you can trespass over here. 15%, you got 13%, 34.8 miles, 12%, it's going down a lot faster now. 11%, 35.7 miles. Oh yeah, power is down big time right now. We're at 9%, 8%. This thing doesn't want to do much over 20 at this point. 7%, 6%, 5%, 4%, miles. This is just a struggle at this point, guys. I am really ready to get off of this bike. 3%, 39 miles. 2%, 39.4 miles. Can we hit 40? Boy, I want to hit 40 so I can be done, I'll tell you that much. Oh man, it's struggling. 39.5 miles, 2%, guys. Can we do it? Can we hit 40? I think we are officially out of power, guys. Yep, call it. So it finally died at 2%, 39.6 miles. Well, there you have it. We had a total range of 39.6 miles. The power cuts out at 2%. So all in all, I feel like it's a very uh, accurate representation of how much range you can get on this bike. Granted, I think most people probably wouldn't have grinded out that last 10% uh, of battery or so. Yeah, we, you know, I was riding around about 70% of the time in sport mode. Granted, I wasn't going super fast most of the time, but I feel like it's all realistic. I'm 240 pounds, so I think 40 miles is very achievable on this bike, which is actually, doesn't really make much sense to me because I have a wired bike. I got about 35 miles out of that and that has about one fifth of the power this thing is capable of outputting and the battery's a little less than half the size of this. Somehow you can still achieve 40 miles on this. I don't really know how that math works on the back end, but nevertheless, you can get 40 miles on a bike that can put out 12,000 watts, which is uh, kind of mind boggling. But anyways, guys, if you'd like to purchase one of these bad boys for yourself and start living your life to the fullest, feel free to use the link in the description of this video. Doing so does help support the channel. If you liked the video, give it a thumbs up and uh, subscribe if you haven't already, and we'll catch you in the next one. Peace.